Hello, my name is Aaron Cavanagh and I'm the founder and editor-in-chief of PostBurnout.com. PostBurnout.com is a culture website dedicated to venerating burnt-out artists the world over. This is our website's podcast where we publish full-length recordings of our interviews, which are sometimes the unedited versions of our site's articles and at other times our exclusives. If you're a returning listener, thank you for coming back, and if this is your first time listening, thank you for checking us out. We hope you enjoy and consider subscribing, giving the episodes a thumbs up if you're on YouTube, or giving it a rating if you're anywhere else. It really helps us out. Thank you. Okay, so here's an interview I didn't actually plan to release. Back in January, in preparation for the release of their debut album, Madra, I interviewed the Galway band New Dad for the featured article for issue 21, or the February-March 2024 edition of The Goo magazine. But there was some kind of changeover in the printers between that issue and the previous one, which delayed its release. As such, some people didn't get that edition of the magazine, and the new one's just about to come out. So I figured that I would publish this full interview for fans of the band who may be interested in hearing you. I do, however, want to clarify that this interview wasn't recorded for postburnout.com. I'm just releasing it as part of my uh, podcast, because at the moment, the Goo don't have a podcast series. Although I think it would be pretty cool if they did. Um, so yeah, I debated releasing this one for that reason, but I decided I'd, I'd put it out anyway and hopefully not get in any trouble also it's for anyone who either didn't get uh, that copy of the the magazine or just doesn't live in dublin and doesn't have access to it and um, i have linked to a digital copy of that issue of the magazine in the description of this episode so you can read it and check it out um, and i also want to know one other thing um at one point i accidentally say chris w ryan of just mustard uh, what I meant to say was he's a mutual producer between New Dad and Just Mustard. He's not actually in the band. And I knew that, but I just screwed it up the way I phrased it. So don't give me shit for that, please. Thanks. It's important, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess my, my first question is, I mean, like 2023 was like so massive for you guys. When you kind of like look back at the year that just kind of went, I mean, uh, what were some of like the highlights and, and I don't know, some of the crazy like pinch me moments? Definitely playing Malahide Castle because yeah. yeah. that was like mm. that's was a, bucket a bucket list, list venue mm. of ours. But like, it's also where we saw Just Mustard Up from Fur the Cure, yeah. and that was kind of a big moment for us because seeing like a band from Dundalk like open Fur the Cure, yeah. and we were like, "Gosh, like we're from Galway, maybe we can do that as well." So it was like a real full circle moment playing Malahide and Rockfield. As yeah, well. recording mm. the album in Rockfield yeah. was so surreal. That was amazing. Yeah. It was like, so beautiful. It was gorgeous. It was yeah, that was incredible. Signing, yes. signing with Atlantic, we did that in at Rockfield, so it was yeah. like double whammy while we were out there, <laughs> yeah. that was really good. Yeah, it might sound a bit cliche obvious, but I think actually just announcing the album yeah. 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 was a really <laughs> nice moment. Yeah. 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 And also the first single dropping was another like, yeah, yeah, yeah we waited for it. It felt like it had been, in hindsight, it probably wasn't as long as we thought it was, right. yeah. it, but it felt <laughs> like it felt 10 like years. It was in a way, I was just saying we were getting so many comments from fans being like, when's it coming out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were so eager that it made it feel like years. I don't know. (laughs) And in a way, this is kind of like the new chapter. Like, Mm -hmm. we've put an Angel out. It was, it's not that it's, like, it doesn't sound like a different band or anything, obviously, but it is that kind of bigger sound that the whole album is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Compared to the last EPs. Yeah. So it was, like, that moment was really, like, Mm-hmm. And then people loved it. So yeah. It was, yeah. That was special. And it kind of solidified that it was real. Yeah. Like, you know when you just yeah. post like, by the way guys, we've got an album coming out. Yeah. So Something like, coming cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, got, you can't really say much more than that. But yeah, it was great having the music out. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, actually, just before um, uh, just for Christmas, I believe like your last gig of the year was actually a relatively intimate show uh, in Galway, the Roaching Dove. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was wondering like what was that like after like the kind of big whirlwind you have just to like do a small show in like your hometown. It's the best. You know what? Just There's no such party. thing as a small show in Galway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it was smaller number wise, like there was more energy there than every other venue you played mm-hmm. all year combined. It was yeah, it was it was one of our favorite gigs. I mean, we were joking after saying we'd do a 10 night run in the road show. Yeah. <laughs> like it's so fun it. though yeah. like I mean I think we were we were all really like it's one of the most nervous I've been going yeah. on because we were kind of debuting like, debuting yeah. yeah that's what it's like <laughs> um, some of like the new songs on the album for the first time live and we've kind of upgraded the set to having like synths in and like mm-hmm. an SBD pad is that yeah. what it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um and so there, there was like so much risk of it could go wrong. People could not enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, it was the best crowd it could possibly yeah, it be. Amazing. Like people loved it, and they were so nice and so supportive. And like there were like a couple emotional 
moments and, and the, they were just such a I don't know. It, yeah, it, it was like, felt like a really nice room. Really special show. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was really, really special. special. Like, I never heard the Roshan Dove quiet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then when we played White Ribbons, it was, was like, it was like, I was like, I was kind of, I was expecting someone to be like, Ugh. Yeah. And I was like, nothing. I was like, it's kind of eerie. We yeah. had yeah. people in tears, like, in that scene. Yeah. yeah. Was everyone was, it was in beautiful. the room together. Like, we were there as much moment. as everyone else and everyone yeah. in the crowd was. Yeah, yeah. One thing I'm actually wondering about the kind of Galway music scene, I mean, it's like, uh, uh, like where, where's the kind of like I guess the cap of popularity of what you can kind of achieve there in terms of like venue size because like I guess I guess you have like the black box the town hall yeah would there be anything like bigger than that or well, like Leisure 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 Leisure. Leisure. Yeah, yeah. Now, so. but yeah that's like all big big artists yeah. coming back and even black yeah. boxes are like you need to be at a level where you're you have your own you PA system. For theater and so you yeah. need to bring everything. So yeah. Yeah. even though it's slightly smaller than Legoland, you need to be at that same level. Okay. You've got to bring out a lorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't have a lorry. Have a lorry. <laughs> <laughs> but the, like the Roshan is just such a good venue. Yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah. It's great. And they look and so good to us. Yeah, yeah. it's so good to us. Yeah. 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 yeah, and actually, I believe you guys are based in London now, if that's correct. So, like, um. It's it's kind of cool that like you know obviously I mean like you know um the new albums so there's still like the Irish connection in terms of like production and stuff and like um I I think like those Irish kind of connections still kind of like um do you well even when you're based like in a bigger city in a in a bigger country and Actually, stuff. Yeah. It almost it's almost better now that we're away in London because no matter what it gives us a connection to home. Right. And we're making it. Yeah. So <laughs> that's kind of sweet, you know. Sometimes when you're like feeling extra lonely, you can kind of remember. I am also creating the very thing that's making remind me that I'm Irish yeah. and yeah. stuff. It's I, I like that. We definitely, about it. Yeah, we definitely became ten times more Irish when we moved to London. Yeah. Well, there on you. Yeah. 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 It's a bloody doing, <laughs> Well, actually, speaking of Irish, I mean, like obviously the album title is Madra, mm -hmm. um, which having studied Irish and Spanish in school, I always thought it was funny that the word for dog in Irish was the word for mother in Spanish and so I was oh, looking yeah. at, Oh, was that not intentional? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going <laughs> I was gonna go into the word a bit. I was looking That's up, so but I was looking up the word and it also means, I forget what language, but it also means blood or crimson. And I was wondering, Whoa. was there more intent to it? <laughs> there is not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it all works. Yeah. yeah. No, That's I didn't crazy. know that. <laughs> all, no those, all those yeah. definitions work for the album. Yeah. 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 We should. Yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, that's cool, you know. That's so cool. Yeah. Thank you. Well, wow. <laughs> so I was going to ask, I mean, like, when it came to the intent of, of um, Gam, like, obviously, like, your previous EPs have been in English, um, I guess, Pan Shees. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, it's kind of a mix. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, Waves, for example. Yeah, but I was wondering, like, um, kind of, like, uh, Colin, uh, um, putting in Irish, because it it's, it's an interesting kind of move, because, like, I think, like, uh, I know a lot of like Irish bands and everything seen like uh, international popularity and stuff, especially like mm -hmm. in the kind of post punk scene as it is. Um, but yeah, like uh, I don't know it's still kind of like that kind of reminder, or it's sort of like uh, I don't know. Maybe if you play Spain, it will have a different connotation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> or like Latin America. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Well, I kind of love that though as well. Yeah, you know, right. as you were saying, like you you do somewhat write your songs and the intention of like. People being able to get different meanings. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, and because Madra, Madra, Madra is like, it was the name of one of the songs in the album, which was the name of the demo. It was just and there was no actual title. tie to the, yeah, to the lip, to the words in the song. Yeah, it was yeah. just a random thing, but we were like, it does. It felt right. It works. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it feels right. right. And we yeah. had because we wrote Madra. It was the first one that was written for the album, and we we didn't know it was going to go on the album. But um, when we were recording the Banshee EP in Belfast. And like, I've lost my train of thought. Uh, we recorded it in about. We wrote it in about fast. You wrote it in Yes, but it was. Oh, I feel like I'm just going to repeat myself now. But it was just a working title, and like we never thought that we'd keep that. But then we had it for so long that we couldn't really change the name. Yeah. Because we were like playing it and listening to this song, we we're like. Just, it's just, just modern works, now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it just is. Mm -hmm. So it's funny that that's the, like, what ended up being the title, but I think it was just, I guess, because it was the first song that was written and it really it, like, it led the way in what the album became. And 
I don't know, just I think having Roger as a title, it felt like it belonged to us. Like we toyed with the idea of white ribbons and stuff, but that felt like that could be anyone's, anyone's album, album yeah. do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, whereas Roger felt just more significant to us. Yeah. Actually, talk about the album itself then. How do you feel it differs kind of from your discography this far? Um, I think, I like to think, anyway, I hope, like the pe I want the people who've been listening to us like for the past few years who found us like back in when Blue came out or whatever mm -hmm. I want them to lo like love this album I I definitely think that the songs sound like New Dad songs oh, yeah. but I think they're just they're cleaner the production is more perfect another level <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I but yeah I hope it does the same thing I for people as the as the I think it's, EP it's gonna last longer as well That's like, true. Yeah. Now, listening to the EPs and it might be just I've listened to them so much yeah, true. <laughs> but they are they They're do no feel old to me now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah they feel like they really it's just not great so much, new dad now yeah yeah, you know? yeah I think they so and I, I hope new dad people think adults. that <laughs> yeah. new dad grow up <laughs> 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 just pretend we have yeah there was actually some uh, uh, note on a particular song I just took note of it uh to do, um yeah, I wanted to ask on the song Nosebleed, there's like a sound effect. I think it's just a guitar, um, but like it has kind of a sound effect. And remind me, again, this just might be my interpretation of like um, at, like um, the at, at traffic lights when it gives you the go to cross. <laughs> they remind me of that. <laughs> yeah. And what was interesting is I, I was interviewing, um, I don't know if you know like the band Pip Blonde, but they're like a Dutch yeah, band. Yeah, and they were yeah. talking, the lead singer was telling me, like the the uh, rhythm of that, like when they were over here, kind of influenced them. Yeah. So I didn't no know if that was way. like an intentional thing or if it's just no. like. Wait, what song is it? I, I, I need you to like do it. <laughs> deep dive all these and then explain. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll just be like yeah. a spiritual. I'll just have like a cork board yeah, with like red strings. Yeah. <laughs> I love stuff um, like that. No, I, I'm gonna listen after that. I haven't. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's subconscious. It's probably yeah. some weird Chris Ryan synth thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It might have been something intentional at the time, and I've just forgotten. So. Yeah. Yeah. We forget things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just <laughs> <laughs> so You mentioned Chris Ryan there. I mean, obviously, I mean, you've worked with him before. He's from Just Mustard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I was wondering also, this uh, album was mixed by uh, Alan Mulder. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, insane know. <laughs> resume. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. and like, obviously, I mean, I think from what, what was it about, like, kind of getting him on the album? Because, like, he has such a versatile <laughs> mix of, like, artists yeah. he's worked mm -hmm. with from, like, Foo Fighters to mm -hmm. everyone. But I, I always thought, like, um, when I think of him, like the connotation for me is like my bloody Valentine. It's yeah, like uh, the stuff he did with like um, shoegaze kind of stuff. Okay. I don't know if that was yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was where it came. From. So like because we were doing this like fresh production with like Chris is a relatively new. He's like a young producer. Yeah. You'd say as producers go. Um, so we're doing like all that this new recording with him because we're so heavily influenced by the like nineties shoegaze and grunge fans. I think that we knew that we'd get a bit of that from Alan. And I mean, I don't think we expected him to say yes, but he did. And we were like, yeah. "Oh shit!" And then like, mi like a mix that always brings the song up. But I feel like Alan, Alan gave us a good like forty percent. Yeah. Yeah. Like they went, they, they were amazing recordings, but like but he mixed them yeah. incredibly. Yeah. Um, and he really liked also, the album, which is yeah. so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's actually made some of my favorite records yeah. ever. It's yeah. insane. But since the goal for us was to do classic new dad mm. but just upgraded yeah it made sense sticking with chris because he gets us he just mm -hmm. he's magic he knows what he's doing like yeah. so that's that classic new dad and then recording it in rockfield sean janocki was engineering equipment. and yeah. brought all the equipment and that was in he has everything you could ever want mm -hmm. if you just make a noise at him he'll make it back on the guitar yeah. like amazing <laughs> yeah. stuff so the help of those kind of people and even being in rockfield i think is what has encouraged us to bring it to that higher level and yeah. Alan yeah, Mulder of course is a then, huge part of yeah. that mm -hmm. yeah he really really pulled the album together mm. yeah. he did um, he was like he needed that for him yeah. yeah like it's crazy I mean like, it feels obvious to say out loud but you know like when you've recorded something you listen to it and you're like oh yeah cool like like yeah, for me that's like how I felt. one of like the soul like where I go as long as like cool I like it um but it didn't like stand out to me that much. Well, obviously, you know, all of the songs are that for me. You know? <laughs> no, 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 I totally, but then I totally um, we got a, a mix yeah. back from it. Like, and I think the first mix, I was just like, this is a new song. Yeah. And it's yeah. obviously sounds the same, like it's all the same aspects, but it really, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's just crazy how much 
That's what you want from a mix. Also, it's Caesar, true. who helped mix a lot. Yeah, yeah Caesar did a lot of them. Phenomenal. Caesar Edmonds. He just Edmonds. got it straight away. Yeah. Like, they were pair them together. Yeah, yeah. yeah, unstoppable yeah. team. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was, I actually remember feeling that. It's funny that you mentioned that, because, like, I remember when we finished in Rockfield, and, like, we didn't listen to anything, because, like, it was just recordings. Yeah. And we yeah. knew that if we just listened to, like, how they were sounding, we'd probably be like, Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't and then like I remember hearing bits and I was like oh fuck okay yeah. anyway but it was well recorded <laughs> and like then obviously Chris like did a mini mix and then we like got sent to Alan and then when it came back I was like oh yeah, shit, yeah I'm alive when the mix <laughs> we came back something here yeah. I, I thought in the studio when we listened like listened back at the I end of the day nervous. I was like these are f- I was the opposite I was like these are fucking Bangers. And then we got back and I was like, oh no, they were not bangers before, but now they definitely are. But I still thought at the time, I was like, yeah, that's good. That's when, like, obviously it's exciting when we're recording the album, Uh but now I think about it in hindsight, I think the moments where I actually started getting really into it and was like, oh no, this is exciting, was when we started getting, like, the proper mixes back. Yeah. Like, obviously, like, the first draft's good, but the ones that you're like, oh my God, like, this is actually, we could put this out, like, this is, like yeah, I think those moments were the ones that really kicked it off. Really, yeah. and Rockfield was just yeah. fun. You know, Rockfield was just kind of a buzz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We were just it was good crack. <laughs> it was great crack. <laughs> but lots of, we watched lots of zombie movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's funny. Very hard as well. Sometimes. What? And we worked very hard as well. We actually did. <laughs> yeah, we did a little bit of work. We, had one <laughs> <laughs> we recorded fifteen songs. Yeah. So four of them are even on the album, and we had a day off. No, 15. 15. Yeah, 15. And, we had a day off, yeah. and we didn't even go that late. Like, there were maybe three mm. nights where we went until like three in the morning, but the rest of the time we were done at like 10. Yeah. And yeah. we were breaking for dinner and lunch mm. and starting at 10. It was, yeah, weird. It was really we were, nice. We're just so like, manic, we have to get it done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you actually yeah. do um, tamper in the studio or do you have everything ready to go before he's entered? Um, there was a little bit of. Like, yeah. Pre production. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we stuff. had a pre production yeah, yeah. day. To get stuff ready, yeah, there's always that was good. Yeah, so they yeah. were like, for example, nosebleed was a completely different. It was song. like a yeah, it was like it, a fast, yeah. higher pop song. We actually we were quite not sh- like it was always going to be recorded at some point, but when we went into the pre-production of Chris mm-hmm. and Sean who engineered, we didn't want to do it, and yeah. it was Chris's favorite song, and he mm. like basically forced <laughs> us to do it, and yeah, we were, and we were actually like a little bit sassy, like a bit like. Yeah. It's like, you know we don't want to do it. And he basically kind of took the song, slowed it down by like 20 BPM, and pitched it down like almost two whole tones. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's a completely different song. Like, but yeah. I, I and mean, we did I, that all together yeah. like in the room, and we were like, do you know what? This is nice. Yeah. <laughs> straight away, we were yeah, like, we were like this is great. On. And it's yeah. straight away on the album. And if we yeah. hadn't done that, like, it's crazy so to true. think. It, like, if we well, had. Yeah. It could just be lost Chris in the down, pile. That would not be on the album. Yeah. Really deserves its spot. It does. does. Yeah, that's good. I mean, that's something I always thought about. It's like how yeah, the kind of production is sort of like kind of an extension of the creative arm in a way. And um, mm-hmm. then you have to kind of like relearn the song in in, in like in the slower BPM. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's the bit yeah. that gets me because I've just got it off and at a level where I can record it, yeah. and now there's new things. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have to do a little bit of something with nosebleed because like, you know <laughs> when your muscle memory yes. kind of knows. Like I'm yeah, sure I know what I did, but we um. We put the bass in some kind of weird tuning, okay. even though it is just like power chords. Basically, I don't know how I played it. <laughs> yeah, I, know, it I don't think so I'm playing obvious. any of what I played no. on the track. Like, I've... yeah, it beats me. So come to the live show if you want to hear some alternate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, <laughs> you guys are playing the uh, the Book Factory yeah. 28th February. Uh, it's kind of like. It's sort of like it seems, it seems on the schedule to be the like last hour show for a while. Um, mm. Yeah, it's wondering what people can kind of expect if they if they pop along to that one. It's gonna be big. big. Like the last one, improved. last one's Wheelands, yeah. which was Grand Social. No, no, no. Oh, Grand Social, yeah. But that sorry. was just after in my head. It was it, that was kind yes. of like first yeah, show but, after yeah. releasing. Yeah. The last yeah. tour, the last tour one in Dublin was Wheelands, <gasps> and that was that was such a good crowd. That was that was. <laughs> That was such a nice yeah. yeah, that's I'm still, so that's still one of my, that's definitely top five. Yeah, not big top time. three. Yeah, I true, reckon true. it's just going to be that energy, but with mm, more new songs. More, better songs. Yeah. Better songs, yeah. <laughs> more people. Huh? Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 28 and 29. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'd love to see you down there if you. Yeah, mm. perfect. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to go. Nice. Um, I guess like the the final thing I'll ask is kind of like uh, obviously the the album comes out um in about. Two weeks? Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Oh, that's so give, weird. Yeah, give, yeah. give or take, yeah. Um, <laughs> it'll be out by the time this is published. But uh, I was wondering, like, now kind of like, um, yeah, now when that's out, like, what's the kind of uh, plan for the rest of 2024 uh, going ahead? They just want to tour. Yeah, tour. Yeah, tour. <laughs> Once it's out, we didn't do much touring last year yeah. at all. Yeah. It was just all out. Al- because, like, it was all the old I know stuff that was, it's so funny. Yeah. Like, it was all album. We were there for two weeks, but, like, we were That's doing so sessions with other people yeah. and we were yeah. doing all the mixed stuff, like practicing for the recording. It was just all album, we did no touring, so we just wanted to tour. Wanted to tour, yeah, 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 we tour. the songs live. Well, yeah. people would be like, oh shit, like it's really good. I think, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and like people who've seen us before, it's definitely, if it was a while ago, it's a very different show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. You know? And yeah, I mean, not, not straight away, but there are so, we have so much music, like not finished at, yeah. at all, but like we need to kind of do like a deep dive through and start yeah. looking at that album too. Yeah. I need to talk about so it. Excited. But I know. I think, yeah, I think the closer we're getting to album one release, the more I want to do album two. <laughs> <laughs> I need something else now. Yeah, I need something else. I would love to get it started this year. Yeah, yeah. hopefully like to, whilst we're, because we are going to like America for a little bit, like when we're on these like longer journeys, maybe we can do some little Maybe chats. Yeah. yeah, that would be fun. Do you guys kind of have like, um, um, sort of like kind of half finished ideas and you're like oh, we really need to kind of like solidify that oh, or... we have a list we have a list Sean made a spreadsheet yeah. Yeah. We're, we're big spreadsheet fans I think it's about I think it's I think it's like 60 things yeah, it's yeah. a lot of them are just like loops and right. stuff but mm. a lot of them are like full demos yeah. and everything. We, we often leave demos for a while right, we yeah. leave them kind of forget about them I actually really like to do it because when you want to play it again, you just listen to it once or twice and then try and play exactly what you heard. Right. But it's never going to be the exact same because you haven't learned it exactly. And it's always better because you've improved throughout the year or mm-hmm. whatever. So, and even like some of those, out of those 60, one of the songs we might be like, okay, well, we'll take that guitar line, put it into this other song and the yeah. rest can be scrapped. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. it just kind of depends. Yeah, because there's always a lot of overlap, obviously, because you forget mm-hmm. that you've written something and then you write yeah. the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that happens. <laughs> Night, Nightmares was taken from another song, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah. Mm, yeah. that's what they yeah, a lot of songs have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like, even Randall, like, Drown was, like, a, was yeah. an entirely, like, that was the song over an entirely different instrumental. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then I was just being lazy one day. I was just no, it's so important to reapproach yeah. things oh, in a yeah. different headspace because it's, it's totally just like it's because you can have written something so great, but because your headspace was like this, it's it, not everything about it is mm-hmm. in the right yeah. spot. And, yeah. and like the album, this album is like things. that. Like so we just did so many of them started in Galway, yeah, and then moved to London, and some of them we wrote entirely in London, mm-hmm. but everything was finished. Mm in the same place, in the same mindset. And that's why it all still works, mm. even though they're two years apart sometimes yeah. in the writing, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think it's so important to give them that's so time to grow. Well said. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks very much for your time. I really appreciate you. it. Thank and you. Uh, Thank you. Get some rest. <laughs> Thank you for listening to that episode of postburnout.com interviews. If you liked it, please subscribe and stick around because we have plenty more like this coming soon.